The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Hey, what's up, YouTube fam? It's Dupree, aka Darth Hater here, and this is my WandaVision review. This isn't The Mandalorian or any Star Wars shows, so other shows or whatever I tend to or want to do um, just a full uh, season review. With Star Wars and Mandalorian, I tend to do episodic reviews, so uh, if you guys have not watched the series yet, please go watch all of it, binge it, and then come right back here. Just come right back here and uh, like, subscribe, and share. You know, anyway. So, spoiler warning uh, if you guys have not seen WandaVision already. So the first three episodes were very um, 50s inspired. They were inspired by like the Dick Van Dyke show or I Love Lucy. And you could tell like they were directed that way. They also had like laugh tracks. They were shot with like an actual live audience. But sometimes during episodes, the camera ratio or would shift. Like sometimes it would go from the normal way they shot these old TV shows to something new like it would be like a weird pan or like a weird dolly shot to which it opened up into like uh, a new world which was happening outside the whole sitcom environment with everything happening with sword outside every episode seemed to transition from the 50s to the 60s to the 70s to the 80s and then eventually to like the 90s and 2000s Wanda got pregnant and like I seen like every episode like the kids got older which kind of made you feel like what is happening. A lot of weird things were going on and we really didn't have a lot of answers. Quite honestly this show faced a kind of an uphill battle with me because uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch or aka Wanda aren't really my ne necessarily my favorite characters, my favorite Marvel characters at all. Especially movie, Marvel movie characters, MCU characters. They're quite um, far in the bottom of the list. I slowly, slowly became more intrigued with the show. I also had to really appreciate that the show like was paying homage to like all these old classic shows that I actually grew up watching, like I Love Lucy, The Dick Van Dyke Show, The Partridge Family, Growing Pains, and A Full House in the 80s, and even Malcolm in the Middle honestly stopped watching sitcom shows in like the mid 2000s they just weren't really a thing for me anymore i even like the fact that they had these weird commercials that kind of paid homage to gadgets and um things of the era with a little bit of a marvel twist like a lot of, a little bit of a marvel easter egg if you will those were like really funny and then getting of uh, the series they were light and hearted and everything with a little bit of Marvel aspect and then they kept getting darker and darker and darker. Honestly, the the most dark one was probably the last one where the kid's stuck on the island. A shark comes out and gives him like this like lunch bar or whatever and the kid just starves to death and turns into bones. And that got pretty dark. But soon we like find out what's happening behind the scenes with Wanda. So in her grief she's created her picturesque version of this town, Westview, which she's pretty much taken over. And then everybody in that town is basically brainwashed or under her control to be this picture perfect sitcom y version of themselves or what they would be in that kind of TV show. So basically, everything is being broadcast to people on the outside to the people of Sword to Monica Rambo, Jimmy Woo, and Darcy Lewis outside trying to figure out what's going on and to figure out how to help her. So the vision that we actually see in the show obviously is not real. So she's actually created him from her grief to cope with everything that she's been going through from like the death of her brother, uh, from the death of her parents, and now the death of actual vision. Wanda's doing this to just cope, you know, because obviously she's in a lot of pain and she needs help, she needs therapy, and this town, Westview, and everything that's going on is her coping me mechanism. So later as we go back and forth between the sitcom and what's happening outside with S.W.O.R.D. and Monica Rambeau, I found myself not really caring too much about what was happening with 
sword outside maybe a little bit with like monica rambo because obviously she kind of has a past with past superheroes mainly captain marvel because if you guys didn't know she is actually the little girl that came from captain marvel and her mother actually founded sword which is interesting because you know if you guys read marvel comics you got shield and then you actually also have sword which is basically like a cia and then like the nsa so that was the only really interesting part about that jimmy woo obviously from the ant-man movies was given a lot more here it's cool to see some of his character traits like come back from the show like the fact that he's always trying to please people or he still is trying to do his magic tricks and then we also have darcy who's like you know, wit and quips, which were actually kind of entertaining. Uh, I didn't really care for her character too much from the Thor movies. Um, honestly, those movies uh, in general, I didn't really care for too much. Thor 1 was actually really good, decent for an early uh, MCU movie. Thor The Dark World didn't really care for, and they didn't use her obviously for Thor Ragnarok. But here she's back and she's funny and she's actually being put to good use for once because they did not know what to do with her and needed the other movies. Like I said, uh, between the show, between the regular show, the sitcom show, and then the regular MCU world, I kind of, like I said, I found myself caring more about the sitcom show because the MCU aspect of this kind of like disrupted and barged in on that. And it was like two shows in one. The sitcom part with Wanda was its own interesting thing, whereas everything else with S.H.I.E.L.D. was kind of a shoehorn version of things to come. It's like they have to pay homage or talk about things that happened in the past, like that came from the snap, or hint at certain characters' histories, like, you know, Captain Marvel with Monica Rambeau. And then they also have to touch on things that are coming in the future because it always feels shoehorn with that whereas i feel like some of these movies can just stand on their own without them having to be like we have another movie coming soon and this is how it's gonna get there for this show how it ended honestly i was a little disappointed that it basically turned into a marvel movie you had two visions fighting each other you had Agatha Harkness who finally reveals herself as a witch and then you have her and Wanda fighting i enjoyed it but I was hoping for a little bit more, a little bit something different that they set up with this show. Another thing that kind of sounded me kind of funny was these two visions fighting and then the fake vision touches the real vision in the head and basically either erases or downloads his memories, which, and then he flies off. So we already know that that's probably how the regular vision or the real vision is going to come back later on and it's going to be weird in the movie or whatever or two and then it's going to be back to normal after that she eventually just lets go of this fake reality thing that she's created she lets go of her kids she lets go of vision she's walking and then she sees monica rambo and then she says they'll never know what you sacrifice for them it's it's like they will if anything like she's doing some pretty messed up things and i feel like maybe she might like need to apologize to like these people this town for everything that she's done because basically when you think about it she's been torturing these people for the past few weeks or days however long this has been going on kitty from that 70s show even says please let my daughter outside of her room she says if you won't free us will you just kill us because it's basically she's just torturing them at the end of the day so i feel like it was a little weird that she basically had to give up sacrifice things that aren't real it was like she got to live in this whole fantasy that she created while torturing other people and then okay i'm just gonna go fly away and go about my business to be alone she obviously learned a lot of new powers she got a new book uh mm, some new magic book um i don't know what really that is about because i don't really care too much about her character in the comics she finally got the scarlet witch costume and now she is known as the scarlet witch which is cool so it's like she kind of came up 
after doing a lot of bad things, which is really weird. Another thing that really made me really happy was the fact that they brought in Evan Peters as Quicksilver. And that made me happy for a lot of reasons. One is just because he is my favorite Quicksilver, especially uh, that scene with him saving all the X-Men in the X-Men movies that doesn't have anything to do with the MCU. I love him as, as an actor. I love him with American Horror Story. You guys didn't actually know he's actually in that movie Kick-Ass. And it's funny because Wanda actually says uh, Kick-Ass as he leaves. So that was like a little nod to that. Four, also uh, just the possibilities of what they could do with this. Could this be possibly our first tip how they plan to introduce the X-Men or how they plan to introduce the whole multiverse aspect of everything, you know, with um, Doctor Strange right here. The possibilities are endless of what they could have done. But like I said, it, it's, it's really nice that they actually put him in the show. But then they kind of do away with that and they're just saying, oh, he's this other guy and he's been recast and um, it's been Agatha all uh, like he's just this guy who was basically just cast by Agatha to play a part because her brother is actually dead and in a different country or his body is in a different country. All that aside, I'm really happy with what they did with this show. Um, I'm happy what they did with each and every character, um, the choices that they all had, the choices they all made. I like the flashbacks. I like the side stories and everything. I like the build up. I like the kind of like whodunit aspect with a lot of different things. I like Catherine Hahn's acting too. I did not expect her to come out and be what she was at the end. And then the fact that they introduced witchcraft in this and made this kind of like a, um, you know, opposite uh, Doctor Strange kind of thing. They even mentioned him too, with um, them saying that um, she's even more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. So as far as what I know about going to the future, I don't know if they're gonna do a sequel series. Um, they might. They might possibly might, but from what I do know for sure is that Wanda is definitely going to be in the next Doctor Strange movie, with, uh, something of madness. That's going to have a lot. That's going to be a big part of the next phase of the MCU. So we're going to see what's going to happen with that. And then hopefully later on we'll get season two. But I'm glad what they did with the show. Um, I definitely would advise you to watch it if you haven't already. I would give this show out of 10, I would give this show a 7.5. Yeah, almost an eight, almost an eight, but I give it a 7.5. Anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you thought about this review. After this, basically, we have Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, and that's going to be with some more characters that I really... Um, I mean, I love Winter Soldier, Falcon, whatever. Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Um, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't like this video, please hit that like button. And like I said, if you did not like this video like button uh if you're not already please hit that subscribe button and if you could be so kind as to hit that bell to get notifications whenever i drop my latest videos thank you guys for watching us take care catch you in the next one bye